So we can jump inside our code base once again and inside our registration controller. You can take a look and maybe extracting this whole section here down to here out into its own action and the strangeness involved in doing this. So I'll go ahead and create a new action which I'll call a public function of handle form submission action. We're just going to get the request injected and then all I need to do is cut the whole lot out and paste that in. And um, we're also going to need to get access to this form. Now I've gone ahead here and added in that second piece there, but for the moment I'm just going to take that out. And somewhat frustratingly, we're also going to need this piece as well. It's got quite a bit of duplication going on there. And that's fine. But what I'm also going to do is say if either the form is not submitted or the form is not valid, then in this case, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to redirect them back to that registration form. And I'll explain why that is as we go through. I can get rid of that bit now and that bit. And unindent all of that. Okay, that's personal preference. So now we need to add in the root annotation. And for this, we'll say registration form submission with the name of handle underscore registration underscore form submission. We'll also set a method here that it has to be of type post, which stops users from accessing slash registration form submission directly. However, there is a bit of a weirdness to this, as I'll explain as we go through. Let's add in that exception and that one by the look of it. Okay. So now here's the thing, as we saw in the previous series, because we're no longer posting directly back to the same action that renders the form, we do need to go in here into our create form and set the action to be this generator URL that points to, in this case, handle registration form submission. Now, we have exactly the same form here, and so we're going to need to do it again. Anytime that you're about to duplicate logic like that, probably a good time to extract it. So let's see if we can use the extract refactoring to do just that. We'll call this create customer or create member registration form and we'll set it to be a private method and it's also detected this one as well so we can replace that as well now we can tidy that up just a touch and that looks okay and this handle form submission action is getting quite busy you might wish to extract that out into its own method and maybe even this out into its own method as well. But for the sake of this, I'm just gonna leave it as is, because in reality, you would probably use some form of event dispatching at this point anyway, as you may have other things that you want to do during registration, such as sending emails or registering them on a certain mailing list or whatever, but we'll come to that in a future series. However, this does lead to a problem. So if we jump to our form now, rather than log in, we want to go to the register form. And we have a user already with the email address of e and e com. So let's just try and register. And we've hit on a problem here where not only did this not work, but it's redirected us off to somewhere that we didn't want to be. So first, let's jump into our member and let's add in some unique entity constraints to ensure that we can't have the same username and email in our system multiple times. So we expect our username to be unique and we expect our email to be unique. Let's just give this a shot. It's really not liking that. Let's just double check that we've got the right action. So we're posting off to the action of registration form submission. So that looks okay. Go under registration controller. And it looks like to me that we're getting caught out by our access control list entries. So let's add in another rule here that says We'll allow anonymous access to anything hitting this route as well. Let's just try that again. And you can see now that we're seeing our values come through, but there's a little subtlety here that's a bit misleading. So because of the way our form is now being submitted, we're no longer posting back to slash register. Instead, we're posting to slash registration form submission. So unfortunately, the URL has changed and that this will all work if we were to change these values here to something unique and try this. Now, this, this will work or it should work. It does work, so that's good. However, 
If we were to log out, try and register again, and again we'll use e at e.com, try and hit the register, and you can see this value is already used. Now if you're a user here, and you're not really sure what's going on, and you go up to the top and you think, oh, it's a bit confusing, you hit return, well, you're not actually gonna see that in prod. You're gonna see a slightly less helpful error screen, but even so from the user's perspective, any error screen's not good. And that's because the URL has changed to that slash registration form submission. We only allow post requests as we see inside our registration con controller. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't see a way around that problem other than to put this logic back inside this action. It's entirely up to you. As I say, I prefer to separate them out, but if you ever use the, the generators that, that Simprini provide, you will end up with everything inside one action with the exception of deletes where they do it more this way. However, if you don't do it this way and you try and do like here, for example, you try and redirect the user instead of just rendering the form again, which would actually get you back to this route, then you end up losing the data that tells you which fields are invalid. So yeah, unfortunately, it's the worst of both worlds there. However, at this point, we do have a system that allows us to register and log back in. And whilst it's not quite as full featured as what you would get with Foz User Bundle, even if you choose to use Foz User Bundle now, you will have a better understanding of how it's working as really Fuzz User Bundle is an enhancement on what you have just learned about here. Now I fully appreciate that we've covered quite a confusing and complicated topic in what I said is going to be a beginner's video but really there's two good things here. Firstly you don't need to understand it all to start using it and secondly if you understand this stuff the rest of Symphony is in my opinion easier than this. So hopefully you found this useful. As ever, if you have any questions, comments, feedback or suggestions, please do leave them in either this video or a video that's most relevant to your question. Thank you very much for watching.